Um, Stephen Wolfe is here, Director of the Centre for Migration and Economic Prosperity. Stephen, um, a very good morning to you. You're going to have to change the name of your uh, organisation pretty soon because uh, under Keir Starmer it will become the Centre for immig Mass Immigration uh, and Economic Despair, won't it? <laughs> well, that's the common sense approach on that, to be honest, Mike, this morning. Right. Without a doubt. I mean, all I can think of is the rhyme, Starmer, Starmer the Harmer. Yeah. Not he really is. I mean, I am absolutely staggered, and I've been around a while. <laughs> I didn't think I could be shocked by how bad somebody was at being the Prime Minister, but he is awful. Absolutely awful. The worst ever, I think. Well, it, it, it just, rem just reminds me, this litany of out of the wood woodwork claims that he's made whether it's the 75 grand of football th th that he's got the fact that you've just mentioned that since 2014 he's claimed more than anybody else as an mp yeah. in terms of freebies the fact that his wife has had another man buying clothes for him and you the question you ask when you've got an individual like this when you're looking at policy is why why is anyone who's got this amount of money claiming so much and then having the audacity to claim he's a man of the people? And if it's right that he's, he's not paying 25% uh, tax, then this should be the end of his career when he's about to tax millions of people in this country who work hard and have saved hard all of their lives. He is the epitome of hypocrisy. Starmer the Harmer, yeah. without a doubt. And now suddenly he's decided that he's going to embrace uh, what some people in his party call the far-right Prime Minister, Giorgio <laughs> Maloney. <laughs> suddenly he's worked out um, that the Italians have got a great idea to stop migration uh, at its source and to start sending people back. Oh, yes. I mean, th this all this excuse that they gave whilst he was the, uh, the opposition leader that... Uh, we've got Rwanda, which is awful, and now the Germans, who is his, uh, you know, he regards as his best friend at right. the moment. You've seen that love in that, that he went to when he went over to see Schultz, and the Germans are doing exactly that now, looking at closing the border between uh, Germany and Poland, sending people to Rwanda, and now he's there with the love in with Maloney, talking about sending people to be assessed in Albania so that they can't stay here. This man is the epitome, as I say, of hypocrisy. He's doing things that he criticised the government for beforehand and now he's doing it now. It's incredible, isn't it? And also, we get the news yesterday, late yesterday, more than 10,000 small boat migrants have now <laughs> crossed the channel since he's been Prime Minister. You know, smashing the gangs has now been re uh, reversed. They're now talking about tackling the gangs and they've uh, put a guy in charge of uh, smashing them uh, who used to tell people that they could be arrested if they sat on a park bench during Covid. Well, I'd, I'd love to see the same person arresting people as soon as they got into the boats, but I don't think very much that he'd be doing that, exactly. No. And this idea of tackling, tackling the gangs is a realisation that they're changing the language because they know the policy will be a failure. When you're trying to attack this people smuggling uh, enterprise, which is now running at billions across the globe, I mean, we're talking half a million, 500 million, a year potentially into the UK, a mm. couple of billion into America, a billion or so getting into Europe. You're going to need more than just tackling the gangs. You need a universal view that these people are evil, but you have to stop the reason why these people want to be here. And the reason they want to be here is because they get benefits, yeah. housing, they never have the chance to leave, and all of that is tied up with our membership of the ECHO and our signatory of the European Convention, uh, sorry, the UN Convention on Human Rights, which guarantees them all those benefits. Yeah, it's absolutely mad, isn't it? Steve, we're out of time, I'm afraid. We haven't got much today, so uh, thanks very much for talking to us. Director of the Centre of Migration and Economic Prosperity.